Hey there, good afternoon, Sagittarius, and welcome to your May Tarot reading. Welcome to Tree of Life Tarot. My name is Carrie, and I'm excited to connect with my Sagittarians today to talk about your May forecast. So, Sagittarius, I'm hoping that this reading finds you in divine timing. Whatever the energies were that brought you here to this reading, that brought you here to this channel, trust those energies. Uh, I'm going to give you some great information today, Sagittarius. And it's perfect timing because today is May 1st. Uh, today is Saturday, May 1st. Time on my end is about 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Okay, Sagittarius. So first thing that I want to do, whether your sun sign is Sagittarius or your moon or rising sign is Sagittarius, maybe your Sagittarius in your Venus. Some of you may be here checking up on the Sagittarius in your life. And others of you may just be intuitively guided to be here. Just trust the energies that brought you here to this reading. You're here for a reason, so stick around. Sagittarius, I'm going to, to begin with, I'm going to talk a little bit about Sagittarius energy. I'm going to give you some astrological information, and we're going to dial in on Sagittarius. This is going to be just a kind of a good reminder of kind of who you are and how you operate, which I feel like these will be helpful energies taking you into this tarot reading today. Uh, and then I want to provide you your astrological forecast for the month of May. And what that is, is we look at the month of May, and we see which planets are going to be moving into which specific houses impacting you, Sagittarius, specifically. So I'm going to go through the month of May and point out the key dates where these planets will shift, and I'll do the best job that I can to describe these energies so you know what to anticipate and what to expect. So Sagittarius, look, at the end of the day, these energies happen regardless. You know, whether you're aware of them or not, they're planetary. So I feel like sharing this information with you can better prepare you stepping into the month of May. So I just look at my own life, you know, and I think, okay, uh, if I have an idea of what what lays a, what lies ahead of me, then I feel like I'm better prepared stepping into whatever I'm stepping into so that I can create and I can manifest. So that's going to give us kind of a big picture look energetically at what's taking place for you. And then we're going to hone in and we're going to do a tarot reading where we're going to see how many of these energies are going to manifest more specifically for you. So you're here for some great information today. Just stick around. If you're here just for the tarot, you can fast forward until I start pulling out cards. Uh, but if not, stick around. So Sagittarius, let's talk about you for a minute here. First of all, how do you know whether or not you're a Sagittarius? You may be new to the channel, new to tarot. So if your birthday falls between the dates of November the 22nd and December the 21st, it means that your sun sign is Sagittarius. So there you go, Sagittarius. Um, your moon or rising signs may be a little bit different. And here's the thing. If you follow tarot, I'm just going to share some advice with you guys. I try to give you the best information that I can. So if you follow tarot or astrology at all, it would be very wise for you to, to find out what your moon and rising signs are. Because look, if I'm following tarot and I, like my son is Aquarius and I just go to the Aquarius readings every time, I'm only getting so much of the information. But at, on certain months, my moon and rising sign energies, which in this case for me are Taurus, they may resonate much stronger. So, you know, it's good for me to be aware of that. So I'm not just following Aquarius tarot readings, but... Taurus tarot readings as well. And my Venus is in Pisces, so sometimes I'm following Pisces tarot readings. So anyways, if you're interested in finding out what your moon and rising signs are, two pieces of key information you need to know. You need to know your exact time and your exact place of birth, or pretty close to it. Um, and I can direct you to a website that you can obtain this information for yourself completely free. There's no charge. And I have no affiliation with the website. I'm like you, I just use it. It's worked for me, so I recommend it to others. The website is www.astrosofa.com. Astro astrosofa.com. Go to that website. You don't have to, again, it's free. You don't even have to put your name in there. Just date of birth, exact time, exact place. Hit calculate, and it'll, it'll provide you your entire natal chart. And this is good information for you guys to have on yourselves. So, Sagittarius, let's get started. So if there are three words that kind of sum up and describe who Sagittarius is in this world, you guys would be considered the philosophers. Love that. Uh, the adventurer, right? Sagittarius loves change. You love movement. You would also be considered the seeker, always seeking better opportunities, seeking more happiness, more experience in life. 
Sagittarius, your element is fire. So that means you're a fire sign along with Aries and Leo energies. The color that resonates strong with Sagittarius is blue. Your ruling planet is Jupiter. The lucky numbers for Sagittarius, three. I need to put an emphasis on three for you, Sagittarius. You have three, seven, nine, 12, and 21. So 12 and 21 reduced back to three again. So that's why I'm just emphasizing the number three for you. Greatest overall compatibility for Sagittarius energy. Don't quote me on this. This is coming from a website, an astrological website. They say that Gemini and Aries are both energies that resonate strong compatibility-wise for the sign of Sagittarius. Your strengths, Sagittarius, very generous energy. You're idealistic, right? Love to look at the circumstances like, okay, I want to create the ideal here. You have a great sense of humor, right? We love to laugh. We love, you know, I mean, Sagittarius, you're quick-witted, you're charming, great in groups, great in crowds, great entertainment for a group of people. Weaknesses, sometimes Sagittarius can promise more than you can deliver. Uh, impatience, sometimes Sagittarius will say anything, no matter how undiplomatic it may be. Which is kind of interesting. Sometimes you just need to say it. Right? You just have to say it the right way. Likes for Sagittarius. You love your freedom. You love travel. You love philosophy. And you love to be outdoors, Sagittarius. Those are beautiful energies. Dislikes for Sagittarius. You dislike clingy people. Uh, being constrained. Off-the-wall theories. And you dislike details. It's like... Just give me the big picture. Don't lose me in all the little details. All right, Sagittarius. Let's get into your astrological forecast now. So let's talk about the month of May. And let's see exactly what's happening for you. So we have a couple big things taking place astrologically for May. You have Jupiter changing signs. So Jupiter's changing signs. I think it happens once a year. And it's moving into the sign of Pisces. Also, Mercury is going direct at the end, of, or excuse me, Mercury is going retrograde at the end of this month. And I'm going to point that out in a minute here. So Sagittarius, on the 4th of May, and today's May 1st, so three days from now, the planet Mercury moves into your 7th house of relationships. On the 9th, the planet, the planet Venus, so the planet of attraction and love, also moves into your 7th house of relationships. So Sagittarius, you've got a lot of em emphasis in the month of May in relationships. Just be mindful of that. Uh, clearing the air. This is a time for important dis dis discussions. So Sagittarius, with Mercury here, right? if there's a any important discussions that you need to have, it's like, God, I've been, I need to have this conversation. I've been dreading this conversation. It's, maybe it's a potentially heavier conversation. Know that, you know, right around the time of the 4th and the 9th, in the, that time window, good time to be able to have those conversations. I think you'll find that things, the conversation will go a lot smoother than you anticipate. All right, Sagittarius, let's continue. On the 11th, you have a new moon happening in your 6th house. And the 6th house is all about your physical health, as well as the service that you provide the world. So with a new moon, this is where you plant seeds. Right, you plant the seeds now for the birthing at the end of the month. So sixth house energy, keep in mind Sagittarius, this is a beautiful time to devote some of your time to maybe some cause that you believe in. Maybe you have a friend that needs your help. It's like, I'm just gonna go and I'm, I'm gonna show up for them and I wanna help out in the ways that they could use my help, right? Or maybe I wanna go and donate time to, you know, the local food shelter or something like that. Beautiful energies for you to be able to do that keeping in mind he who gives receives. And then there's also the emphasis on your physical health. So this is a, Sagittarius, a great time to get outdoors. And I know you guys love being in the outdoors. So, you know, get outside, feel the sunshine on your face, breathe in the fresh air, walk around, maybe jog, move, stretch, breathe. Those are energies that serve you great, Sagittarius. On the 14th, you have the planet Jupiter, your ruling planet moving into your fourth house. So the fourth house is the house of the home and the family. So this is a time for some to, ex to expand your home base. Um, some of you may be buying land at this time and by expanding your home base, you know, just, you may be picking up a second property or you may be, you know, expanding, buying additional property, um, maybe with the idea of developing it in the future. 
traveling for others. Some of you may find yourselves living in more than one location as well. Just be mindful of those energies. Sagittarius, on the 21st of May, you have the sun moving right back into your seventh house of relationships, and it shines a light on you. So th these energies help you to find ways for you and your energy to shine in all your relationships. So Sagittarius, month of May is a strong month for you guys when it comes to relationships in your life. So we may very well pick up on these energies in your tarot reading. We may have a relationship love reading here for all I know. Uh, on the 26th, you have a lunar eclipse taking place in your first house. So we go right back to the first house and it puts the spotlight on you, Sagittarius. For some Sagittarians, this will be a time to reinvent yourselves. So think about who do I want to be this year, right? Who do I want to be and what do I want to experience in my life this year? Maybe there are experiences that I wanted to take on last year and I just didn't get a chance to take those on. So I'm going to gear up and embrace these experiences this year. And I'm going to maybe lay out the plan, the, you know, the game plan, that's going to, the energies that you can invest in order to take you in the direction that you want to go. And, you know, the ability for us to, to be able to reinvent ourselves is just a beautiful, beautiful thing. You know, to resurrect yourself. You know, reinvent, it's like you have the opportunity to be anybody that you want to be. You know, and for example, you know, I've, about, I've lived half of my life already. And I would have never in a million years guessed that I would be reading tarot. But a few years ago, those energies came into my life. And what do you know? Here I find myself with a YouTube channel reading tarot for all of you. So you just never know what to expect. And that was an opportunity for me in my life to be able to reinvent myself. So I took advantage of it and I embraced those energies. And I'm glad, I'm excited that I read tarot. Okay, Sagittarius, let's get into your tarot reading. Uh, first energy that I want to pull is going to come through as an affirmation energy. Let's just see which affirmation your guides feel would be best suited for you to hear, taking us into your May Tarot reading. Sagittarius, beautiful energy taking us into your reading today, coming to us as energy itself. High energy month in the month of May for you. Life force is flowing for you, Sagittarius. Open yourself to receive the power from within. Life force is flowing for you. Open yourself to receive the power from within. Life force is flowing. Open yourself to receive the power from within. And really, if you think about it, Sagittarius, everything always comes from within, right? It's like you take any good idea that's ever been imagined or dreamed up out there. Before it was ever created, it had to start with a thought, you know. And at the end of the day, you are the creator, right? You were the one with the power, the ability to create whatever kind of life you want for yourself. So Sagittarius, let's create. Let's get into your tarot reading. Um, the tarot spread that I'm gonna use for you today is called the Celtic Cross. I used this uh, tarot spread last month, the last two months. I really like the spread. It kind of it's inclusive. It covers past, present, future. There's just there's some great card positions here, you know, pointing out specific energies that I feel like really help you out. But Sag, this first energy that we're going to pull for you is going to come through as present energy for the month of May. It may represent the energy of the matter at hand. So we have you in the energy of release. This is equivalent to the death card. Uh, so Scorpio energy just showed up on the board for you, Sagittarius. Um, this could represent the energy of an ending, but you know, you're in the energy of releasing, of, of freeing yourself from something in your life. We're going to get some clarification on this energy for you. But let's move down to the next energy. And this is going to come through as the challenging energy for you for May. Okay, challenge coming in for you is feeling this beginning coming in. Strengthening bonds, which is equivalent to the Ace of Pentacles. You know, so some of you, Sagittarius, you may be in the energy where I've, I've been releasing myself from something. You know, it could 
this could represent the energy of an ending. I could be bringing something in my life to an ending, right? And maybe it's difficult for me to release these energies because I'm having a difficult time stepping into this beginning right here. Strengthening bonds. It's a tangible beginning that I can live, feel, and experience. Let's pull some clarifiers for you, Sagittarius. Let's clarify, release, taking us into your care reading. I'm going to switch over to my Crystal Vision tarot set. Please clarify release for Sagittarius. Okay. So we have two energies coming out to clarify release for you, Sag. Here we have the Seven of, seven of Wands. So Seven of Wands is a defensive energy. Right. What, it, what it represents is whatever this is you're trying to release, you've been in the energy of feeling like I have to stand my ground, right? So I'm not sure what that energy represents to you. It's coming in attached to the Queen of Swords. Um, why is the Queen of Swords energy showing up? Air sign energy, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, right? You may have a Queen of Swords in your life. This may be in the energy of helping you to be able to free yourself from this energy, uh, but you're try you're in the energy of trying to release yourself from something that you had to stand your ground on. That's caused you to be a little bit defensive. Uh, and the Queen of Wands, she she holds a sword, right? So you may be using the sword to cut away and remove any energies in your life, right? Maybe you're using the sword to cut away any energies so that you can free yourself and release yourself from this energy. Let's clarify the strengthening bonds beginning. Please clarify strengthening bonds for Sagittarius. Okay. So I want to point out Sagittarius. This is a tangible beginning. So why is it coming in as a challenge? Because look, you're not in the energy where I'm able to feel this beginning yet. Maybe it hasn't happened yet, but yet I know that it's there. Intuitively, I know that it's there. The high priestess energy tells me that, right? Not only does the high priestess energy tell me that, but it tells me that this beginning is coming. I can feel it coming. And maybe I can feel it coming when I've freed myself and I've released myself from whatever this energy is. Um, but here it comes right here on the chariot card. Cancer energy just showed up for you on your here in your tarot reading. For those of you that may be connected to a cancer. Um... So those energies clarify this beginning. It's not tangible yet. I can't feel it. I'm not, I'm not in it. I'm not experiencing it. But intuitively, I know that it's there. I, I know that it's coming. I can feel it coming. Why? Because you're probably creating it. Sagittarius, let's move down to focus on energy for you. Tell us about focus on energy for Sagittarius. Okay. Two energies came out quickly here. Some of you may be focused on Libra. You have the Justice card coming in. So if you're connected to a Libra, putting your focus on Libra, it's coming in attached to the Two of Cups. Soulmate kind of energy right here. Uh, so I'm focused on this connection in my life. Look, it doesn't have to be romantic love. And I need to emphasize that. Many times that is the case, right? This could be your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, but this could be your job. At the end of the day, it's just another energy, so it doesn't have to be another person. It will be for some of you, right? But coming in attached to the Justice card, it's almost like there's some type of ruling that's, t that's taking place here. So maybe I'm waiting around for some type of ruling. In fact, maybe I'm waiting to release something in order for this connection to come together in your life. Interesting. Sagittarius, let's find out some more. Let's ask about the past. Tell us about the past for Sagittarius. Tell us about the past for Sagittarius, please. Okay, we've got two energies that are coming out, clarifying the past for you. So here we have the Seven of Swords. 
energy showing up, you know, which is representing the energy of feeling a little bit scattered, right? I'm bending down to pick up these two swords and maybe when I do, I miss out on these five swords, right? If I go for these five, then I'm gonna miss out on these two. So it's representing the energy of, of going through the motions. So maybe you were in the energy in the past, but I just feel like I'm going through the motions and I know this isn't an energy that settles well with Sagittarius because we get bored. It's like, bring me something, bring me new, bring me changes, bring me my destiny right here. Star card just showed up for those of you that are connected to an Aquarius. You may have been connected to an Aquarius in the past, but this is representing the energy of manifesting all of my hopes and dreams. Uh, so both of these energies connected to your past in the energy of going through the motions, not sitting well with you, and it's like, wow. And that may be, maybe it was that energy of going through the motions that put you on into, into this seven energy, seven and seven. Seven and seven sounds like a cocktail. All right, uh, is that a cocktail? I mean, there's seven up. I can't think of what the alcohol is, it's called seven. Ah, I should know that, but I'm not a drinker. So I probably shouldn't know that. All right, uh, strengths for you, Sagittarius. Tell us about Sagittarius' strengths. Your strength is this beginning. It's the tangible beginning, the Ace of Pentacles beginning. Let's clarify this. Let's clarify the Ace of Pentacles beginning for Sagittarius. Too many energies. Please clarify this beginning for Sagittarius. Okay, all right, so here we have the Five of Swords. Five of Swords that's attached to this Ace of Pentacles beginning. So the Five of Swords is a past energy. Now, maybe that's this could have been why you were put on the defensive. This could have been the energy that you're in the energy of releasing. This is a limiting energy, you know, representing the energy. I feel like somebody stabbed me in the back. You know, somebody may have let you down in some way. And look, let you down in a way that like suddenly it put you in a, it, maybe it put you in the hot speed, in the hot seat. It's like, now I've got all the pressure on me and it may have put you in a very defensive energy. So I want to step away from this energy and what, this is maybe when I'm in the energy of releasing and I want to step into this beautiful beginning. And also coming in as your strength, Sagittarius, you have the Knight of Wands attached to this beginning right here. So the Knight of Wands, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius energy, fastest moving of the night energies. He's coming in quickly and moving quickly towards this beginning. Again, Sagittarius, coming in as your strength. So with the Knight of Wands coming in, you know, I feel like many of you, you may already be well on your way in, in the energy of releasing whatever this is that you need to release. Let's ask about the future. Tell us about the future for Sagittarius. So in the past, I was going through the motions, feeling somewhat stuck, feeling somewhat bored. And then the light came on. I'm like, what am I doing here? I need, I want to go out. I want to manifest all of my hopes and dreams. And it puts you, it, and now I need to make a choice. I need to make a decision. Right? And I'm wearing a blindfold. So, you know, I'm making this choice and I'm making this decision, even though I can't f fully see everything. I'm trusting my feeling. What am I, what is my feeling telling me? Your intuition is speaking to you. Your intuition is saying, look. Sagittarius, you need this beginning. We want to bring this beginning into you, but at the end of the day, the choice is going to be up to you. Please clarify the Two of Swords for Sagittarius. Choice is up to you to take action. King of Wands energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. This is somebody who's confident. This is somebody who knows the direction that they want to go. I mean, they, they feel their inner power they have the lion as their companion. They're very fast moving. Their other companion is the dragon, representing speed and fire. Somebody who's very intuitive as well. Somebody who listens to their intuition. So past energy, hopes and dreams, feeling a little bit stuck, feeling a little bit bored. Now I need to make a choice. I need to make a decision. And I'm going to embrace this King of Wands energy because I'm going to take action. The King of Wands is an action taker. All right, let's move down to suggested approach. 
Tell us about suggested approach for Sagittarius. You have the Empress coming out for you, Sag. Beautiful energy. One of my favorite energies in all of Tarot. Let's clarify this Empress for Sagittarius. Okay, so we have two energies coming in connected to suggested approach for you. So suggested approach, you have Leo's energy coming in, the strength card, right? Your ability to find that courage within you, those inner resources of courage, your ability to take a chance. Because look, some of you, you're in this energy where I need to make a choice, right? Make, maybe I'm making a choice to take a chance right here. Uh, but I'm having to make a choice wearing a blindfold, so I can't I can't see all the answers. I'm having to trust my intuition here. So it's all about taking this energy of the leap of faith, right? And when I do, it puts you into the Empress energy. So you're no longer in this defensive energy of the Seven of Wands anymore. This is what you're moving away from, right? Moving away from Five of Swords kind of energy. I don't like all the fighting. I don't like all, all of the arguing. Uh, I want to move towards something much more harmonious. It's tough to get more harmonious than the Empress energy. And the Empress should resonate really strong with you because look, I mean, the Empress energy serves you well. So look, Sagittarius, be mindful. It's like, who do I know in my life? Like, wh who are my Empresses in my life, right? Maybe it's a mother, maybe it's a grandmother, maybe it's a sister, you know, it's boyfriend, girlfriend. It's like, who are who are your the Empresses in your life? And you want to spend time with those Empress energies, because this is a contagious energy. You know, what's great about the Empress energy is she feels her value, she recognizes her value, right? So if it's another person in my life and I'm spending time with somebody who recognizes and feels their value and their worth, inevitably that those energies are gonna be contagious for me. And I'm inevitably gonna pick up on those energies and pretty soon I'm gonna start feeling and recognizing my own value and worth much more. I feel that's like that's what's being shared here with you. Let's move up to what it is you need to know. Tell us what Sagittarius needs to know, please. You need to know you have changes coming in, Sagittarius. Will of Fortune. Let's find out about these changes. Tell us more about the changes for Sagittarius. Ten of Cups. So here's your seventh house energy coming in. Relationship, connection. So some of you, yeah, you may be in the energy of stepping away from something or somebody. Energies that just aren't serving you very well. Stepping into something different. And, and look, you're having to really trust your intuition to do this. Because there are no guarantees in this, right? I mean, I'm not seeing any guarantees here at all for you. Other than, here's what it is you need to know. You've got changes that are coming in. And these are changes that are going to affect your home, right? Ten of Cups is, it's kind of fourth house energy, you know, the, the home and the family. We see in this energy, male and female huddled together in the water, and she's holding a child. So you have changes that are coming in that are going to affect and impact you at home, maybe impacting your family as well. Husband, wife, spouse, children, hopes and fears. Hopes and fears for Sagittarius, please. Okay, these energies are probably coming in as fears. So here we have the tower card and attached to it we have the devil card. So Capricorn energy just showed up. Some of you may be connected to a Capricorn, right? But the devil energy represents the things that I fear in life, you know, the things that I'm not feeling comfortable with connected to my ego. Tower energy represents change coming into my life. Right? So the tower energy can be a universal energy where, here's how the tower works. I'm gonna use myself as an example. I'm prodding along, working my way through life, right? But I keep getting these nudges. Of, I need to make a change for myself, right? It's like, it's my, my intuition screaming to me. And I can listen to those changes and I can 
follow through and I can make those changes. But sometimes I'm just Taurus and I don't necessarily follow those changes. Anytime that's the case, if those changes are really important for you to experience in your life, it sounds magical and kind of hokey, <laughs> but the universe has a way of stepping into your world and shaking things up in a way of, that moves around the parts and pieces in a way that creates change, right? And I feel like maybe this tower energy is here as a universal energy for those of you that maybe aren't creating this tower energy on your own. And this tower is going to be the energy that's coming in that's going to help you overcome the devil energy, which is an energy that's connected to fear, you know, to ego, things that... that Things that are unknown, right? That I that bring in a lot of limiting energies to me. The next energy coming in for you, Sagittarius, is I want to be able to, to create. I want to be able to manifest, right? And maybe it's my hope, Sagittarius, that this tower comes in, right? Maybe, look, maybe you're hoping for this tower. It's like, I just need this change to happen and I want the universe to step in and to move the parts and pieces around in my life for me. And I've done that before. I've been in those exact energies, right? So I understand how those energies work. It's like you're wanting this tower energy because you're desperately wanting to overcome this energy of fear, right? Fear is just not an energy that's gonna sit well with Sagittarius. It's like, once I can get rid of the fear, then I can feel the magic coming in, right? I can create and I can manifest. Why? Because your energy is much more balanced now. All right, potential future for Sagittarius. Please tell us about the potential future for Sagittarius. Beginning, Ace of Wands. Uh, not just a normal beginning, but this is a very passionate beginning. This is a very creative beginning. Sagittarius, I mean, you guys have some creative ideas that you're ready to just take and pop in and run with? Let's find out. Please clarify this Ace of Wands beginning. So it's a beginning that comes after the Three of Swords. Some sadness and some grief. You know, it's the Three of Swords that's attached to this beginning right here. So Look, and maybe this Three of Swords is the energy that's attached to this Tower moment. Because look, this Tower moment could come in, it could shake things up in my life, and it could feel a little, a little abrupt and a little bit uncomfortable, right? And at the end of the day, there can be some sadness and there, there can be some grief here. Because look, you may be in the energy of leaving, you know, moving away, getting away from somebody in your life with with this release energy right here. I mean, anytime you have release and you have the three of swords, many times we're talking about, you know, somebody, maybe a split up of some sort. It puts you into the energy of the unknown card, right? So I'm looking at the future. I want to see what the energies look like ahead for me. But I'm looking into the crystal ball and it's clouded. I'm unable to see. Um, so maybe unable to see right now because of this three of swords energy. I don't know. I mean, Sagittarius, I have, I've got lots more questions. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to do an extended tarot reading for you guys. Uh, this is where I'm going to wrap up this reading here on YouTube. But in the extended tarot reading, I want to clarify all the major arcanas here for you. And look, I want to get into the details, right? The hows and the whys and the whens as well. So we're going to go after more specific information in the extended tarot reading and then I also want to build upon this ace of wands beginning for you to see what the energies look like moving ahead for you after this three of swords maybe after this tower energy right here it's like yeah I could be going through some type of split releasing something and it's like I just don't want any heaviness from it I want it to be light um, that could be why the tower energy is coming up but thank you so much for being here I hope these energies are resonating with all of you. For, for those of you that are, that want to follow me over to Vimeo, you can do so by clicking on the link found just below this tarot reading. For the rest of you, this is where we part ways and say goodbye. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the love, for the support, for the beautiful comments, for, for some of you, the contributions that you make towards the channel. Look, they make a difference for me. They really do. They help keep the lights on and everything else because... This is what I do. So you give me the opportunity to show up like this for all of you. So thank you so much. If any of you are interested in getting a personal tarot reading or you want to ask about your life specifically, send me an email at treeoflifetarot9 at gmail.com. 
I'd love to connect with you and schedule a time to work on your personal tarot reading. We can look at and see what's going on in your life. Okay, Sagittarius, May looks exciting for you. It's May 1st. We're off to the gates. We're off to the races right now. So have a beautiful day and a beautiful month. Thanks for being here.